one of the things that struck me um, in just talking to other progressives about this is what you think of as the theologians of the big mainline schools. Obama got elected and they're like, oh, one of us is back in the White House. And the question they never asked is, um, is it really a Christian endeavor to want to play golf with the Pharaoh? I mean, Moses didn't go around going, you know, I got these Ten Commandments and you know, the whole like story of Israel doesn't base around playing golf with the Pharaoh, but all of a sudden you have a UCC man who's okay talking about Niebuhr and pluralism and homosexuals being not evil at the same time. And they're like, we got our man in the White House. He wants to get out of uh, Iraq. Wonderful. And I think that really misses what was missing. It was like they were just looking for the opportunity to put their stamp on something that existed completely separate from them. My own experience in Winston-Salem was uh, the Obama grassroots movement. There were three people who were ordained that basically were the of the five or six that were running his campaign in Winston-Salem. And I was the only one who was allowed to do anything in the worship liturgy. The other two weren't even allowed to preach at their Methodist or Episcopal church. Because of the separation allowed... of church and state? No, just because they weren't up in the ranks enough. They were only 26 and just recently ordained. But they were allowed to run a presidential campaign. And because the, uh, even the main lines are looking for this desire for sameness of agenda and things. And then they're going to put their stamp on it. And one of the things I've really admired about Laurent's work is that while he's looking for what is the future of of the church in addressing social issues and theology, he recognizes that one of the shifts we have is a shift that embraces difference as foundational rather than sameness. And that's what I saw coming up when, when main lines were like, oh, we're just going to put our stamp on Obama as, oh, that's the same as us. We get credit. Ryan, it sounds like a low and outside pitch. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my, I mean, my sense, the one hesitation I have for the way the question or the conversation is going so far is still the language of uh, conservative versus progressive or, or, or liberal. And I, from what I've heard uh, in our conversations is you really want to get beyond this either or. In other words, not just, or as you were saying, <laughs> too, not just get our guy uh, in the White House. So what interests me, I mean, to get to your question, can... Christianity, call it progressive, uh, transformative, liberal, uh, new, differentiated, can it get traction in society? I, what would excite me, what I would be enthusiastic about, is something that that gets beneath this sort of progressive versus conservative mm -hmm. option, and that even gets beyond uh, um, simplistic models of how can we give a theology that supports a particular political structure, but one that actually challenges people's way of being mm -hmm. and knowing and acting in the world, which then, which then automatically will influence the, the political structures uh, in which we live. So it's genuinely transformative. Yeah. Any positive examples come to mind? Because I'd like to see us wrestle with some examples. You've, you've worked in a lot of these areas. A positive example of, of, of it happening. Of, of, of it actually being changing the world. Transformative. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I can say this. I, I am most optimistic. I think if there's going to be a positive answer uh, to your question, which of course I hope there is, the best candidate in my view are emergent type churches or emerging or whatever the, the right, the latest term is, whether they call themselves that or not. And I think some of the reasons are they specifically are trying to avoid this kind of uh, either or dichotomy, either we're conservative or we're liberal. Uh, so, and their openness to difference, thing, thanks for that, that pitch, uh, is one that, that I think can help us get beyond this sort of either-or dichotomy. Mm -hmm. It reminds me that the podcast you did on homebrewed Christianity, the second one more recently, where you talked about this article and the, the varieties of pluralism. I mean, I, that's what I hear in the background. Yeah, oh. or on the church, ecclesial, the four marks of the church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was one of, one of the, probably the most, or one of the more provocative uh, Articles that I've done, I was actually surprised the algae today uh, published it. But just briefly, the the church, uh, the classical marks are the church is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And my argument briefly was that that tends to be based on oneness, uh, sameness, uh, protecting the boundaries, and that's true for conservatives and liberals. Mm. They're just different boundaries, different samenesses. But I wanted to suggest that the church is uh, multiple embedded, particular, and hospitable. Mm -hmm. uh, and this undermine it's a different sort of philosophical way, not just of thinking, but of knowing and being in the world. And so if there, 
if there isn't going to be a positive answer, I think this, whether it's emergent per se or not, is this kind of radical restructuring, all at the same time of the way we think theologically, the way we act uh, ethically, and the way we are in our feeling and being in relation.